With all the problems of overpopulation and the apparent slow loss of land to the oceans, you'd think that the last thing on any human's mind would be, hmm, I wonder how I can keep myself alive forever. And yet, the question of immortality has plagued our minds for hundreds of thousands of years. The oldest written story in history, Gilgamesh, recounts the tale of a king trying to gain immortality. Juan Ponce de Leon traveled to the Americas solely to find the fabled Fountain of Youth, and today, people are needlessly freezing their dead bodies in the hopes that they might be unfrozen in the unforeseen future. But let's stop for a moment and think about the idea of immortality. In order to accomplish it, you have to keep yourself alive indefinitely, not for thousands, millions, or even Googles of years, forever. So is such a feat possible for us mortals? And if it was, would we even want the burden of eternally sustaining our initially mortal selves? That's what we're going to find out in this episode of Stuff You've Probably Wondered with Captain McMuffin. In order to properly start off our journey into immortality, we can't just dive straight into cyborgs and cryonics like the sci-fi nerd within you so desperately wants. No, if we want to begin a naturally long life, we must first take a look at the natural lives around us. There's a lot of variation in life on Earth, and as a result, you can find some pretty interesting species out there. Take, for instance, the animal of choice for the top ten lists and crack.com concerning a naturally long life. Terptosis nutripula, otherwise known as the immortal jellyfish. The reason for being called this? After birth, jellyfish enter what is known as the polyp stage of their life cycles, where they are hopelessly latched to the ocean floor. Upon reaching sexual maturity, the jellyfish are released from their polyp stage to become the iconic jellyfish shape we can all identify. The difference with the immortal jellyfish is it has the ability to somehow transform back into its polyp stage and become latched to the sea floor again. Ideally, these jellyfish can repeat this process as much as they please, practically fooling nature into allowing it to live essentially forever. Another animal worthy of note is the tardigrade, or water bear. While these microscopic creatures do not live for very long, they represent the complete opposite side of the spectrum, the ability to withstand just about anything. Extreme heat, extreme cold, radiation, pressure, even the void of outer space. Water bears do this by entering a state of hibernation, much like some mammals. The difference being that their metabolism drops to almost zero. It's wildly fascinating because these tiny critters are a fraction of a fraction of an inch thick, yet they can practically become dead and withstand some of the toughest environments on Earth. Of course, these two creatures are far simpler than just about any mammal, let alone humans. When it comes to us and our furry relatives, things need to get a little more complex. The general unspoken law among most animals is that your lifespan is proportional to your size. The way this works for mammals is the number of heartbeats. When your heart reaches its 500 millionth heartbeat, you die. The speed at which these heartbeats take place will define the average lifespan of the mammal in question. Thus, where field mice only live a few years, elephants can withstand the test of time for about 65 years. It's clear by this way of looking at it that humans, while we are larger than most land animals, should not be able to live past the age of 20. And this was the case thousands of years ago, but now with the involvement of regular hygiene and modern medicine, the number is far higher, about 3 billion heartbeats, or somewhere around the person's 70s. Furthermore, we are not done expanding our life expectancy exponentially just yet. The marvels of medicine and science continue to allow us to live longer. The question is, how much longer? There's a lot of speculation on this subject, and as such, you can find a plethora of theories and experiments being done to figure it out. But the most likely, if not the most interesting, is the Hayflick Limit Theory. Hypothesized by Leonard Hayflick, it states that somehow, cells in the body know that after a certain number of duplications, they need to stop copying themselves altogether, thus leading to the demise of the subject in question. Sure, we could allow our miraculous ways of lengthening life to get the better of us, but somewhere along the line, our cells will get a message from our DNA that was hard-coded within, and this message will grind the gears to a halt at an estimated maximum lifespan of 125 years. This theory, however, will not stop us from trying our hardest to bend the rules of the DNA rulebook. Scientists have been working to understand the aging process as well as how to slow it down by working with smaller, simpler animals like mice and fruit flies. By limiting the animal's diet and sexual habits, the scientists found that they would live twice as long. Of course, this is not a very pleasing method to live longer. Sure, you can live to be a hundred, just eat a diet of rice and never have sex! Sounds like a supremely fulfilling existence. So, lifestyle binding aside, futurists have been all over the idea of becoming immortal and have begun to find the most logical answers to this apparent issue. David Brin has an amazing article about these solutions on his website, but here are the top three he describes just in case you're too lazy to go read it. The first of these is probably the simplest, cryonics. In case you're unaware, cryonics is the process of freezing yourself in a container after you've been declared legally dead. 
The hopes of those who have already done this are placed completely on the technology of the apparent future, so that someday, somehow, they could be unfrozen in a new, brighter future. That certainly is a lot of faith for the human race, isn't it? And yet so many companies have hopped aboard the human icicle train, ho hoping that a decent number of people will willingly turn themselves into a block of ice, despite the fact that doing so is slightly illegal. So perhaps simply waiting for a time where immortality is a regular occurrence isn't the best of ideas. But another idea worthy of noting is one that science fiction writers and enthusiasts can't seem to get their hands off of. Letting machines do all the hard work of staying alive for you. Becoming a cyborg, by way of definition, includes adding some form of cybernetic enhancement or machinery to an already living being. However, this isn't to say that machinery can be used only as a way to make humans more mobile or powerful. More machinery working in the body can make humans infallible, free of disease and aging, but how far are we willing to go before we rely on machines if we ever decide to take this course of action? According to Dmitry Itzkov, a Russian entrepreneur, the limit may be a complete transition into robothood. His 2045 initiative is a project in which he and 20,000 others who have backed this project will find a way to install the entire human consciousness into an artificial body, essentially turning the human race into a mass of androids, all by the year 2045. At this point, just in case you're not completely terrified of the thought of the world being inhabited by Cybermen, then we're ready to move on to the final proposed method of immortality. An idea that has made its way through several of the world's religions is transcendence in which one can take their consciousness, or soul, to a higher plane of knowing and existence through prayer, mental discipline, and moral behavior. Similarly, the idea of techno-transcendence, a fairly new idea, involves humans taking their consciousness to a higher stage of knowing and existence. The most prevalent way of accomplishing such an abstract feat would probably be downloading your brain, your emotions, memories, personality, etc., onto a computer to live in a virtual realm free of any needs that might cause death in the real world. To understand this, think of the game Minecraft. In the game, there are two settings, survival and creative. In survival mode, you are dropped into a world with nothing but your fists, and you have only a very limited amount of time to set up your defenses and build a shelter before night falls and death is imminent. But on creative mode, all of these obstacles and mobs are removed. You are invincible and don't have to find food. You have the ability to spawn anything you want and build whatever you want for an unlimited amount of time. If we were able to accomplish techno-transcendence, we could find ourselves in a technological nirvana, free of any cares or worries. But is that something we would really want? What if it's expensive? And if everyone is in this technological domain, who would fix it if it breaks down? As unfortunate as it may seem, this type of cybernetic heaven may never come to exist for every living being. So perhaps it's impossible for humans to biologically exist forever if there is a hard-coded limit on life. And perhaps it's not possible for our race to live on through computers or frozen in blocks of ice for an undetermined period of time. But you know what? That's okay. Death is part of life, and anyone who thinks otherwise is kidding themselves. If we somehow are able to become immortal, we may never age, but that doesn't mean human nature will disappear. There will always be violence and killing in this world of ours, and don't think for a second that humans will stop reproducing enough so overpopulation will become an issue. No, the only way we can truly exist past our expiration date is to make a legacy for ourselves. We may be only in this life for a short time, but it's long enough for each one of us to make an impact. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have a question you'd like me to answer, leave it in the comments or email me at CaptainMcMuffin at gmail.com. Also in the comments, share your thoughts on the idea of immortality. Is it ever going to be possible? Are there some ways we could prolong our lives that I didn't mention? Give me some good suggestions, and I'll see you next time on Stuff You've Probably Wondered.